it's a simple test circuit. Um, this is the cell that we're going to discharge. And it discharges through this diode here and this resistor here. This is just a 1 ohm resistor and the diodes are there to really prevent the batteries from being discharged any lower than about 0.6 of a volt. There's an additional resistor soldered across there, across the um, diode and resistor. And that's just to lower the input resistance to the analog input on the Arduino. Because if you don't have a cell in that position, uh, you can just get up to a, you get up to about 0.6 of a volt of noise in that position. So that it's not it's not a significant discharge path for the battery because you're using a 10k to a 47k resistor there. So it's just to lower the input resistance on the analog input. Discharge path, as I say, is through this resistor and this diode. The diodes are matched to give you um, the same forward drop, because obviously um, the forward drop on a diode can vary with temperature and the amount of current. So I've matched these diodes, so they've all got the same forward voltage uh, drop up to at 400 milliamps. And I find that at 400, at, uh, 400 milliamps, there's about um, 0.7 volt drop across this diode. So, with that being a one ohm, when the cell voltage is, when the cell vo cell voltage is down to about 1.1 volts, the discharge current um, is exactly 400 milliamps, which is quite sufficient for doing this test on our AA batteries. I did notice that um, at 400 milliamps, some of the batteries, these ones for example um, they did um, they, they did get warm they did get noticeably warm when they were discharging so that would be an indicator of a fairly high internal resistance I suppose but um, on the discharge circuit um, R1 and D1 do not get significantly warm you can quite comfortably put your fingers on those so even at 400 milliamps there's no problem for that circuit to do discharge Gives me a uh, holder that I'm using for the batteries. The components are mounted on the underside. Um, it's a flat ribbon cable, and it just goes to a homemade five-pin connector. Got your four um, voltages, and there's a ground, and that just plugs into the Arduino. Now, as you can see on the display, there was nothing, nothing plugged in. It just reads random noise. Um, now GNU plot, um, I mean you can do this analysis pretty much in real time as you can see here. I just call up the, um, I've got an SSH connection from the machine this is plugged into, to there. So if we call up that, you can see that the random voltages on there are being plotted on with GNU plot on here. And if I plug this in, drops off pretty much real time. Now it's not necessary to do a battery analysis in real time, you can take a sample every minute which is fine, but uh, it's good fun just to play around with this kind of stuff. I don't know if you can make that out, the voltages have just shot up again. Now, for doing the plots with GNU plot, I'm using Bezier curves, so they give you nice smooth curves. So if I drop, let's say, just drop two of the cells out. You can see the figures that we've got there. So it will plot in real time, but it's not necessary to do the, this kind of test really in real time. Now just an additional thing for you to note here, I've wired up um, in my sketch example I, I wired up the LCD display slightly different from what um, the standard e example um, for the liquid crystal library used. 
the Liquid Crystal Library uses pins 12, um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11 and 12. Um, now because that seems to stretch across two of the um, sockets here, I've moved, moved them all to just one side. So I'm using pins 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. You can use any of the digital pins that you want. You just specify it in the in the uh, initialization for the liquid crystal library which pins you're going to use. We'll have a look at the code for that in a minute. So, just to bear in mind that if you've already got an LCD wired up to your Arduino and you just run the sketch that's included here, um, it ain't going to work because, as I say, I've moved. I've just moved the pins over. It just makes it neater, I think, to configure it that way because you. The, the lines that come from the LCD display to the Arduino, there's no crossover in the cables at all. And you get the added bonus that every time it does an update to the um, LCD display, it makes the onboard LED flash. I don't know if you can see that. I can see the green one flashing, that's the RS-232. The uh, little red one flashes every time it updates the LD LCD display as well, because that's on pin 13. And I'm using pin 13. I think pin 13 is the uh, right select, or I think it's something like that. Let's start by taking a look at the sketch. It's not terribly complicated. Um, as I say, I've um, swapped some of the lead, leads around on the um, LCD display from the Arduino. So I'm using pins 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That seems fairly straightforward to me. Um, right, we launch straight into this bit here. Um, interval equals 1. Now that's in seconds how often you want the Arduino to report the, the cell voltages. Now I've got that down at one second, and that's really ridiculous. Um, just having that at 60 seconds is is quite adequate. Um, sets up the um, serial board rate. Um, it's all fairly straightforward stuff. Okay, now the main um, void loop uh, runs at 500 milliseconds. I find that if you run it any faster, um, the updates to the LCD display are all too blurry and it's just um, it makes it difficult to read so uh, looping no faster than 500 milliseconds is uh, is fine for reading the LCD display um, at the interval period it um, um, then jumps out to this um, function here send data and send data just prints the time in hours, minutes, and seconds, and again, you can um, you can just comment out the seconds um, if you like, because you, you don't really need it for battery analysis. Um, so you can comment out the seconds, um, and then it prints out the um, the uh, cell number and its voltage. Now I've got this set to um, you print out comma separated values because I wasn't originally going to do it in a spreadsheet, but um, with GNU plot you can use any separator you like, you don't even have to use a comma or you can just use a space. And the format of the data as it comes out is um, it gives you the time, the uh, cell number and then the cell voltage. So as you can see we've got cell 1 there, cell 2, cell 3 and cell 4. In fact um, uh, do we know it's running? So if I just open up the serial monitor, you can see that um, it's been running for what 25 minutes already. And I've not got anything plugged in, but obviously if I plug in the uh, you can see that they all the results then go down to zero. So hopefully you're okay with that for the um, the sketch. Let's take a look at some of the uh, 
some of the programs. Right, well the main one is uh, this record data from um, TTY USB 0. Let's just take a look at that. Right, this um, uh, just sets up a serial port and it creates a data file to store the voltages in. Um, this here is the um, setup for GNU plot for the formatting. Again, it's got seconds there, but you can take the seconds off if you like. Um, data file separator is a comma because I'm using copper separated values. Gives it the title. Uh, the Y range is like the voltages from 0 to 2 volts. Um, various setup parameters again. And there's a loop here at the bottom which reads the data from the serial port and then um, plots the data using GNU plot uh, in, in this loop. I think that's fairly straightforward. Um, you run the command just you know you type in uh, record data from TTY USB 0 um, and then you pipe it into GNU plot. I'll show you that working in a second. Um, plot cells, I mean obviously let me just show you this um, when, it, when, you, when you are running the record data from TTY USB 0 it's recording the data um, show you again actually when you're running this script it's recording the data in the file called data it just creates a file called data and then um, you can read, I mean the values that you get are just obviously you know your time, your cell and the voltage and you, you can then play that back So, if I just call up a terminal window here I can type in um, plot cells uh, what's the name? give me a name of Apex Tech ones will do and uh, you know, tab complete is your friend of course and it um, plays back that file into GNU plot. Let's do another one. Let's do the um, the BTY cells because they're fun. <laughs> so they're barely batteries. Uh, BT. Oops. What's it called? Uh, you can see, well, it did quite well. It actually managed to sustain all of, uh, well, I suppose it dropped to about 1.1 volts after about, what, 15 minutes? Wow. Um, there's one other one which is pipe into GNU plot, and that's just really a bit of fun because I can run that one on the phone. Um, and have a plot real time data. The data is recorded on the main PC. Um, but then it just you can just use pipe into GNU plot to on, on any device. Um, that's about it, I think. We'll just run the record data from TTY USB zero just so I can show you. So if we type um, put it in TTY USB zero GNU plot. I've got the discharger plugged in. So if I plug in some cells, that's four, three, two, one. And say so these are Bezier curves, so they're nice and smooth. Don't suddenly just shoot up. If I take out, let's say, let's take out two and three. Okay with that? We just control, control C out of that. And uh, we should have a data file there as well. Data, there we go. It's only just a short file. There are example plots on my website at nicknorton.net and the, um, there's a link on there to AA cell discharge analysis using the Arduino. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.